Liberty Process. This is an instructional disassembly video for the Liberty Series LL4 Progressing Cavity Pump. While repairing, disassembling, or installing any Liberty Process product, we recommend using the Operations, Maintenance, and Installations manuals and reviewing them before starting any repairs. These are available for view or downloadable at www.libertyprocess.com. These manuals contain the full information on how to properly and safely assemble, disassemble, and safely operate your Liberty Progressive Cavity Pump. Before we begin, if the pump has been in service, we recommend that you have flushed and drained the pump of all pump mediums and have a sturdy workbench on which to work. Tools required for the disassembly of the Liberty Series LL4 Progressing Cavity Pump, a hammer, a strap wrench, pipe wrench, or chain wrench, a dowel rod less than an inch in diameter, a standard packing puller to remove the stuffing box packing, a small flat-bladed screwdriver, a 3 quarter 5 8 and 9 16 inch wrench, a 5 16 inch Allen wrench, an appropriately sized or adjustable hook spanner wrench for tightening the pump drive shaft lock nut, a pin punch, 3 16 of an inch in diameter or smaller, a putty knife and container for grease salvage, a vise mounted to a table or stand, and an arbor press or hydraulic press to remove the bearings from the pump drive shaft. Stator removal. Make sure the pump is mounted or clamped to a workbench at the suction support. Remove the discharge adapter by unscrewing it from the stator using a pipe wrench, strap wrench, or chain wrench. Remove the top of the stator support by removing the two mounting bolts using a 9 inch wrench. Remove the pump stator by unscrewing it from the pump suction casing by using a pipe wrench, strap wrench, or chain wrench. Unscrew the pump stator further and completely remove it from the rotor. Rotor removal. The pump rotor is removed from the pump together with the connecting rod. To remove the connecting rod from the drive shaft, remove the drive pin retaining screws using a 5 8 inch Allen wrench. Slide the collar pin retainer forwards towards the packing gland. The drive pin and drive pin washers will now be exposed. The drive pin washers can be easily removed using a small flat bladed screwdriver. Remove the drive pin by using a punch that is the diameter of the pin or smaller. Drive the pin out of the drive shaft by hitting the punch with a hammer. Remove the rotor and connecting rod assembly from the pump by pulling the connecting rod out of the pump drive shaft. Rotor removal from the connecting rod. The rotor and connecting rod are separated by removing the retaining band and rotor pin. Remove the retaining band by using an arbor or hydraulic press. Place the connecting rod and rotor into the press in a way that only the retaining band makes contact with the press plates. Use the press to push the connecting rod through the retaining band. Remove the connecting rod and rotor from the press and clamp in a vise with the connecting rod facing up. Now use the punch and hammer to remove the rotor pin from the rotor head and connecting rod. Remove the connecting rod end from the rotor head. The rotor is now completely removed. Remove the rubber connecting rod washers from the connecting rod. Inspect the connecting rod, drive pin, rotor pin, and connecting rod washers for wear and replace if required. Suction casing and drive shaft removal. Remove the two packing gland nuts using a 9 16 inch wrench and slide the packing gland off the stud so that it is loose on the shaft. Remove the four suction case bolts using a 5 8 inch wrench. The suction case can now be removed from the bearing housing to expose the drive shaft. Place the suction casing on a workbench with the packing facing up. 
You can remove the packing from the suction casing using your fingers or a standard packing puller. Next, remove the lantern ring. You may also find another layer of packing, which you can remove with a packing puller and finally a packing gland insert, which you should be able to remove with your fingers. If not, you can use a dowel rod to push the packing gland insert out from the other side of the casing. Bearing cover and key removal. In order to remove the bearing cover, you must first remove the key from the keyway in the drive shaft. To remove the key from the keyway, gently tap a small flathead screwdriver with a hammer to pry the key out of the keyway. Take care not to damage the key, keyway, or drive shaft. Use a 9 16 inch wrench to remove the four bolts from the bearing cover plate and remove the bearing cover plate from the shaft. You may need to tap a small wedge with a hammer to aid in removing the bearing cover plate. Take care not to damage the thrust seal installed on the cover plate. Using a 3 quarter inch wrench, remove the two bolts holding the suction support cap on the bearing housing and remove the cap. Remove the bearing housing from the suction support. Put the bearing housing in an arbor or hydraulic press and press the drive shaft assembly out of the bearing housing. Take care to place the bearing housing on the press plates in such a way that the drive shaft assembly can be pressed all of the way out. Remove the packing gland and collar pin retainer from the bearing housing while the shaft is removed. Drive shaft bearing removal. The pump bearings can now be removed from the pump drive shaft. Place the drive shaft vertically in a vise with the keyway facing up. Remove any grease from between the axial and radial bearings. If salvageable, the grease can be saved and stored for reuse. In order to remove the bearing lock nut and bearing lock washer, tap a small screwdriver with a hammer to bend the lock washer tab out of the slot on the lock nut. Use a hook spanner wrench to unscrew the bearing lock nut. Remove both the bearing lock nut and the lock nut washer from the pump drive shaft. Using a press, remove the thrust and radial bearings and the bearing spacer by pressing the shaft out of the bearings. Only put pressure on the inner race of the bearing to prevent damaging the bearing assembly. The drive shaft assembly is now completely disassembled. Radial grease seal and thrust grease seal removal. The radial grease seal can now be removed from the pump bearing housing. In most cases, the radial grease seal can be removed using your thumbs. If the radial grease seal remains stuck, insert a rod into the pump bearing housing from the end where the bearing cover is installed and gently drive the radial seal out of the housing from the other end. The thrust seal is mounted in the pump bearing cover plate. Using a rod and a hammer, gently drive the thrust seal out of the bearing cover. The Liberty Series Progressive Cavity Pump is now completely disassembled. If you have any questions about or require spare parts for the repair of your Liberty Process LL4 Progressive Cavity Pump, please feel free to contact us at www.libertyprocess.com. We always have complete pumps and all spare parts in our inventory ready to ship the same day.